tropical black today. It's delicious. Hey guys, welcome to another session of Mint Tea. Today we're going to talk about being your own witch and being confident in your practice. So I get a lot of messages on Instagram and on other social media with people asking about how they can be themselves when it comes to magic and how they can incorporate their aesthetic or their style into their magic. I mean, the, the, really sit, honey. Sit. Sit. You can sit right here. Just sit and stop attacking me. <laughs> I think this comes from the idea that you have to look a certain way or adhere to a certain stereotype of what a witch looks like and what a witch's space looks like or what her altar or um, sacred space looks like and that isn't true and there are so many witches who like very similar aesthetics and so they incorporate those into their practice or into the way their space looks but that's not for everyone some of us like to have like pastel things in our sacred space or foresty things or gothic things or spooky things it's really up to you i became a witch when i was really young i was probably about 11 years old so I've had lots of time to grow into my practice and see what kinds of things worked for me and how I could make everything 100% my own. I think it's super duper important to discover things for yourself and to learn things on your own and to do your own studies and your own research as well as learning things from other people. I think that becoming your own person and becoming your own witch are two in the same. So if there's something that you decide that you like, you can incorporate it into who you are and not have to feel like you're following a certain recipe. Although there are lots of witches that follow a certain recipe, they follow rules and regulations, and that's great for them. But it may not be great for you. Definitely not great for me. So <laughs> don't be afraid to explore and find things that you like and incorporate them into your practice. Being confident in your magic comes from being confident in yourself. So if there's something that you're learning about or that you're studying it doesn't feel right to you, you don't think you want to do it, don't do it. You don't have to. Unless you're following a religious form of witchcraft where you have all of these rules and all of these steps that you have to do to be a part of that religion, then you don't have to follow things to the T. Witchcraft is a practice. It's something that you can incorporate into whatever you do already. If you're a religious person, so you can be a religious person who also uses magic. You don't have to belong to a certain religion. You don't have to be religious at all. You can just be a human that decides that they, you know what? I want to try manipulating the forces of nature and energies around me to create results that I think will be awesome. That's it. That's it. <laughs> For some witches, there is an initiation process. I myself did go through an initiation process, but you definitely don't have to do that. First time I went through one, I was about 15 years old. It was a very traditional sort of initiation. There were 12 people involved, nudity, the wood, all cut, you know. You don't have to do that. My second initiation, I did myself. I was 25 years old. I decided that I wanted to follow magic in a certain way that was particular to me. And so I did a self-initiation on a very beautiful night, gorgeous stormy night. It was epic. It was really dope. I'll never forget it. It was just such a wonderful experience. And I did that all by myself. Just me, some really loud, dope, trippy techno, and the storm element outside. Don't feel like you need to have a group of people initiate you into witchcraft or have a ceremony that involves several people that puts you into this place like, now I'm a witch. That's not how it works for everyone. With that being said, there will be some people that tell you otherwise. There will be people in your journey that will say you have to do things a certain way, you have to be initiated into a certain craft, and there are some magical groups where you have to do that. So if that's the type of group you want to be a part of, then you will have to follow those steps. If not, no one can tell you that you need to eat seven grapes and then cut yourself and bleed into an open chalice full of stardust and that's going to make you who you want to be because that's not how <laughs> that's not how it works. Unless you like came up with that yourself and you're like, this is what's going to do it for me. You know, it's really, really, really up to you. I am sweating. Your magic is yours. It's up to you how you want to initiate yourself into the craft. Confidence starts when you decide what sorts of things that you want to do with your practice. Say you're the type of witch who wants to spread love and just put positivity into the world and that's all you want to do, that's all you want to think about. Then that's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. That's all you've decided that you want to focus on in your magic. You can do that. If you're the type of witch who decides that they want to 
put protection spells on everything that they have and everyone that they know and they just want to be very protective. You can just do that. You can do that and go to church on Sunday if that's what you want to do. Or if you're the type of witch that wants to hex all of your enemies and hex the enemies of your family and friends and you want to you want to curse people and their cars and their jobs and establishments, you can do just that. <laughs> there really is no limit, there's no minimum or maximum, there is no rule book for your own personal magic. A part of feeling confident in your magic is learning how to do the things that you want to do as well. So reading plenty of books from all different subjects of magic is really important. I like studying herbalism as well as herbal magic. I like to study minerals and crystals, aromatherapy, I study energy healing, science, cooking. There are so many things that you can incorporate into your magic. So. Oh, my tortoise is, he's a, hi everyone, I'm Scoots, welcome. He's a toe biter, so I'm just gonna just. Studying so many things can only strengthen your magic, and I suggest just studying anything that interests you and then finding a way to incorporate that into your magic. It's always wonderful to follow other people who practice things sort of the way that you like to practice them, because then it can give you pointers and ideas of how you can strengthen what you do. However, following something the way that someone else does it exactly is not going to make it personal to you. It's probably not going to work as well for you because that's something that they created for themselves. Writing your own spells, creating your own incense, creating your own blends of oils and things like that are always, please don't bite me, <laughs> keeping your book of shadows updated with things that are happening to you, the way spells are working out, if they're not working out, herbs that you're interested in, dreams that you have that you feel are important. Just writing everything down and keeping a log of how those things are going on in your practice and your journey is also going to help strengthen your magic and it'll help you stay confident because you'll know these are experiences that you had so you know that they're 100% personal to you. So just remember, nobody can tell you how to be a witch. No one can tell you what you need to do to be a witch. These are all things that you can decide for yourself. If you need someone to give you a little bit more confidence or a little boost, of course, ask questions. But remember, relying on your own intuition is so important. Pointers, tips, suggestions, those are gonna help you. Yeah, they're not gonna make you. You make you. And I gotta take this sweatshirt off and my tortoise is chewing things that he's not allowed to chew. So thank you guys for joining me so much. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Instagram. You can also ask me anything in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for other videos or things you want me to chat about, just let me know anywhere, boo, I'm here for you. Have a great day.